let's just honor King Jesus right now as moms, dads that are here, we celebrate you. Some of you daddies are mamas too. Some of you mamas are daddies too. Some of you aunties and uncles and grandparents and cousins have had to step up and be what God needed you, to, you, needed you to be for that child, for that family. And I just want you to know that there's an open heaven celebrating your lives today because your hearts have been open to Him. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and your mercy. We have come into this house, gathered in His name. To worship Him, won't you, won't you raise your hands and worship Him with us? We have come into this house, gathered in His name, to worship Him. King Jesus, we love you. We have come into this house, gathered. Christ the Lord let's forget about ourselves family let's forget about ourselves concentrate on him and worship him thank you for your warm embrace my God let's forget about ourselves concentrate on him Let's forget about ourselves, concentrate on Him, and worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Jesus Christ the Lord. from all destruction. We take the limits off of you, Father God. Faith has risen up in our hearts with an expectation that with you truly nothing is impossible. So Father God, on this glorious Mother's Day, Father, embrace everyone that's here at the sound of my voice with your unfailing, unconditional love. Give everyone that assurance that Father, you are extending your hand of goodness you're extending your hand of mercy and grace to us, Lord God, that as we look to you, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, we have an expectation for the miraculous in Jesus' name. Your supernatural intervention, Father. He's healing bodies right now. There's tension in the mind. Some of us just need to let go and let God. We need to continue to say, God, I trust you with my life. If you weren't able to be at the uh, earlier service today, Pastor Charnay shared a powerful message that we need to get a hold of. To keep roaring.
roaring, a roaring with that lion's roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah and enforce the devil's defeat. We say, shut up, devil. Take your filthy hands off of my family. Take your filthy hands off of our bodies. Take your filthy hands off of our marriages in the name of Jesus. Take your filthy hands off of our city. Take your hands off of our state. Take your hands off of our nation. Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy on us today. We thank you, Father God. We're here to worship you. We lift our hands. It's an outward demonstration of an inward surrender to Jesus. We're here to worship him, Jesus Christ, the Lord. We are standing on high. an open heaven here today face to face I see you're the holy one no word but holy that's what I would say 
If I were asked today to convey who you are, no word but holy. If I had to choose one word describing you, I would use. No word but holy, no word but holy, that's what I would say if I were asked today to convey who you are. No. off of you today in Jesus name holy God do a holy work no I 
praise Him right now. Would you just magnify Him? Healer, 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 healer. Have your way here, healer, healer. You've always been there. I hands before you holy God there's no one no
pressure that's been in the head, the power of God is releasing that pressure right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. We cry out to the blood of Jesus that ministers life and healing and miracles and restoration, cleanses us of all unrighteousness. That pressure is going. That pain in the back. That inability to be able to lift your arms. Oh, there's a release in Jesus' name. There's healing in our organs today. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Circulation being restored in our bodies in the name of Jesus. We curse sickness and disease at its root in Jesus' name. We command all sickness, disease, disorder, pain, and discomfort. You go now in the name of Jesus. It washes white and Come on, choir, sing real strong. Oh, the blood of Jesus. situations around by the blood of Jesus. Oh, it washes white as snow. I'm here to testify of the goodness of God. We've all got our stories of the faithfulness of God intervening on our behalf. Hearing from Pastor Charnay today and just the supernatural intervention, and we know some stories sharing with one another as dear friends over the years, just how God has gotten in the middle of the most difficult, seemingly impossible of situations. over 17 years ago my oldest daughter Ashley she had a baby girl you may be seated if you were here on Friday you heard a little bit of my story at 18 I didn't think 
that I could handle having a baby when I was presenting a life of perfection to family and friends. I was the good girl. But I got pregnant in college and I thought I can't do this. I can't I can't have this baby at 18 and I and I aborted that child and that that baby's in heaven now and I'm going to get to see that baby. That baby's in my future. But my daughter, our oldest daughter of four girls, she came to me crying. She's a part of our Christian school. Her parents are the senior pastors of the church. Really, the Holy Ghost is a senior. We're just the assistant pastors. Some of us are going to get that about midnight. But she came to me and she says, Mommy, I, I, I've got to tell you that, that I'm pregnant. And you know, you don't expect to hear that from a teenage girl who's your girl that you've raised up in the church, you've raised up in a godly home, you've endeavored to give her the truth of God's word. And she, she was sensitive to the Holy Ghost and she loved the Lord and yet got, got greatly distracted and lured by the world like so many of us do. And when she said that to me, of course, as a mom, I was broken on the inside because as Pastor Charnay said, it, it wasn't as it should have been. It was out of order. She hadn't graduated from high school yet. She hadn't gotten married. And yet, here she found herself pregnant. And I said, what are you gonna do? And on the inside, I'm just praying and believing God that she's going to want to do what's right. But I knew where I had been. And I was just praying for her and she said, Mommy, I wanna have this baby. And I cried louder and harder with that news than when she first told me that she was pregnant. Because I said to her, you're so much braver than I ever was. You're so much more courageous than I ever was. And you've made a decision. You're not going to be a hypocrite. I was a hypocrite. So I'm here to say that the goodness of God brought us here today. I'm blessed and honored on this Mother's Day to be here with Pastor awesome anointed pastor Jason amazingly anointed pastor Liz and their mama pastor Virginia I am so honored and blessed to be here you have no idea this is our first trip my first ministry trip for years now because of that horrific thing that is under our feet in the name of Jesus you know, the devil tries to shut us down, but we are the church. God's magnificent church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Woo! Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Amen. So I said, honey, we're going to do this together. And she went ahead and went through her pregnancy and her dad and I were with her every step of the way and we shared with our pastor what had happened and he said, I'm gonna to fly to Hawaii. Pastor Sessa did just that. He laid his hands on Ashley and he just believed God for a supernatural pregnancy, supernatural delivery. We were so grateful because we repented as well. She repented, but so did we as parents. Didn't take the blame per se, but yet we had a part to play. And I'm not under any condemnation. I just appreciated that my pastor wanted to make sure that our hearts were well. And so he had us share with the church that our 18-year-old daughter in our family, as a part of our school, had gotten pregnant. And, and Pastor Art was very gracious and he was very broken when he shared service after service at that time what had happened. And we had so many people in the church, so many women that came running up saying thank you for being so supportive of your daughter. I, had a, I was raised in a Christian home. My parents were pastors, and I had, I had a baby out of wedlock, and they didn't have the same response. And I said, I pray you have forgiven them. People are people. Please release them. They didn't know how to respond. 
or they didn't respond the way you wanted them to. God's speaking to us today. Forgiveness is key to our walk of faith. Forgiveness is key. And I'm sharing all of this because on this Mother's Day, and I, I sent greetings to my, my children, and I sent greetings to my oldest daughter, Ashley. She has two children now. She's not yet married. 36 years old. Battling through a lot of things in her life. And I keep my eyes on Jesus. And I let the word of God be my final authority. That come hell or high water, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve King Jesus. Well, she has this beautiful baby girl. She wanted to give her one name. I said, no, her name is Isabella. Called of God. And so we laid our hands on that baby and Pastor Sessad came and we, we all just came behind this beautiful baby girl. Two years later, she's going through all these different symptoms and going in and out of the doctor's office. And they don't know what to do. They don't know what to call it. They give it this name. They give it that name. They, they call it this. They call it that. And then she has this horrible breakdown. And we have to call the ambulance because she's having a seizure. And her bottom lip is just is, is as big as, as almost the rest of her face, like half of her face. She's only two years old. We finally take her to the hospital. And, and I thank God that someone finally said she needs a blood test. When they took the blood test, they said, oh, we'll come back to you with the results. And Ashley and I waited and I just held my big girl's hand. And I said, Ashley, we're looking to Jesus. The interesting thing was, there was about two weeks into that month of January, but on the first day of January that year, you know, when you spend time before the Lord and you say, Father, is there something you want to bring to my attention at the start of this new year? And he took me to very familiar verses of scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, where it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all of your ways and he will direct your path. And I, I you know, when it's so familiar, you kind of look at it in, in that familiar way, like with the spirit of familiarity, like I know that, isn't there something deeper you've got for me, God? Isn't there something more? Maybe from the, you know, from the depth of, of, of some other story in the Bible, but he just kept me there. And I repented. I said, Father, forgive me. Your word is alive and powerful. And I don't ever want, I said, forgive me that I, I allowed these verses to become familiar to me. You've got depth for me to see and understand. And I'm going to live out that truth of that depth of, of that word till Jesus comes or I go to heaven. There's depth in the word of God. It's alive. So I began to break down these scriptures. Trust. What is that? Like, let go, Kuna. Stop wanting to be in control all the time. Just dealing with my life and with me. Start of a new year. Endeavoring to consecrate myself and dedicate myself to him so that he can have his way and show himself strong on my behalf, right? We all want that. He says, acknowledge me. Keep your attention on my word. Incline your ears to my sayings, Proverbs chapter 4. Keep them in, in the midst of your eyes, in the, in the crevices, in the depth of your heart, and guard your heart with all vigilance because there flows the issues of life. Kuna, I need you to trust me and acknowledge me. Keep your attention on my truth. And I was listening and I was listening and I was writing and writing, writing day by day by day. And then I get to this one word direct in verse six. And I thought I understood that word direct. It seemed like it was just, you know, the primary word of direction. I think I get it. If I'll trust you and acknowledge you, you're going to give me direction for my life. Yes, that's one meaning. But then the Spirit of God said, I want you to go to the, your, your, your old-time thesaurus. I want, I want you to go to your Bible thesaurus. 
And look up that word in the original Hebrew. And I looked up that word direct, and it literally means, the original text, making what's wrong right. Making what's bad good. What's upside down, making it go right side up. And then it says, making what's crooked straight. Come on, God is straightening backs. God is straightening backs. God is straightening bodies up today. God is straightening up our lives. He's here to direct our path. He's here to direct. He's straightening us out. He's straightening us out. He wants to straighten us out today. Physically, emotionally, psychologically, peace. You are my peace. Who has broken down every wall? You are my peace. You are my peace. You. so important for our lives as believers so I cast all my cares on you for you care for me you are my peace you are my So he's taking me back to the word and he's saying, Kuna, I want you to trust me. It's the beginning of that new year. Don't lean on your own understanding. I want you to keep me at the forefront. Use your authority that I've given you in the name of Jesus. Enforce the devil's defeat. Keep him under your feet. We serve a resurrected savior. He's alive. And this is how God's ministering to me. Day after day, I go to these familiar verses of scripture and they're becoming more and more alive to me. He says, I want to direct your path, Kuna. I want to direct the pathway, the life of your family, of your church. Trust me. Two weeks later, all hell is breaking loose with our granddaughter, our first granddaughter, Isabella. Those blood tests are taken and they come back. Ashley's holding my hand, I'm holding hers. They said, we're sorry to tell you this, but your granddaughter has stage three leukemia. We're not sure yet what the treatment's going to be, but we're gonna do all that we can to help her. Ashley kind of collapses and I hold her up. I said, baby girl, you made a decision to have this baby when you didn't have to and you didn't even have to tell mommy. But you had this baby. This baby's marked for God. We're gonna stand on God's word of truth and we're gonna trust him with all of our hearts. We're not gonna lean on our own understanding. We're gonna acknowledge him every day in the middle of this hellish situation. And he will direct our path he's gonna make it right and we clung on to those verses I did every day and I slept there at the hospital with Ashley she slept in the bed with Bella and I was on that side bed you know I became very acquainted with that hospital 
and she went through extensive treatment. Some of you have got such extenuating circumstances. I have no idea what you've gone through in your life and I'm not here to say that my situation is worse than yours or even make any kind of comparison. Please forgive me if, if you feel like I'm telling this story in a sensational way because that's not my heart. I just want to testify of the goodness of God on this Mother's Day, on this Mother's Day. She went through the treatment, some amazing miracle stories where when the first time she was going to have blood drawn, we decided by the Holy Ghost to put her port on the outside, excuse me, on the inside. On the outside, she wasn't going to be able to go in the water and she was such a fish, she loved the water that Ashley and I prayed and we had a piece that it would be placed under her skin. Some of you that know how that goes with applying the chemotherapy through the injections and taking blood draws. For children, they usually say that when that port's on the outside, it just makes it easier for them. It's not as scary for them to see that needle go into their skin. But we prayed and God gave us peace. And so the very first appointment, really quick, I wanna share this miracle of God, because God's got miracles for us. But we've gotta keep our roar. The lion of the tribe of Judah lives on the inside of us. And I don't care what it looks like or what it feels like or what it sounds like, there's a victory in the midst of the war. There's great triumph in the midst of the war. That very first appointment, I'm there with Belle, I sit her down on my lap on that gurney and this woman with wild red hair wearing a headband to pull it back. Very fair skin, freckle face, kind of on the plumper side with this very bright nurse's top on and bright pink pants. And I'm thinking, wow, she loves kids. I love her, her dress. She, she's fun. Bella, Isabella. She said, oh, I can't wait to see your beautiful blood. Your blood is beautiful, Bella. I get the privilege to draw your blood today, sweetheart. But she's talking like this because she's from Texas. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some of your blood, Bella. It's beautiful. She's just this big, big-eyed little girl sitting on Mimi's lap. And I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, Father, give this baby a supernatural experience today that she not have any pain, that she not be afraid. This woman just convinced her that her blood was beautiful and, and it was exciting to see. And I'm sitting there and I used to be really kind of squeamish about blood issues, you know, to see it on the, I was, oh, thank you, Jesus. It was a part of my own work with the Holy Ghost as well. But this woman drew that blood and Bella was not at all afraid. She was so excited. Mimi, the beautiful blood. So precious. And I cried and I thanked this woman. I said, thank you so much. Thank you for being so kind, so compassionate. We so appreciate you. And she said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be here today. And she leaves. I get Bella, you know, all straightened out and changed and everything, and we're about to leave. And I, I see one of the nurses that I've always seen in that particular cancer ward. And I said, excuse me, there was a, a lady with bright red hair with this headband on and bright colored top and pink pants. She's from Texas. And she drew Isabella's blood. We just want to say thank you again to her. The nurses all start looking around at one another. They said, we got Bella's blood. And they're looking at one another because they're thinking, didn't you get it? And then the girl's saying, well, didn't you get it? Because it's there. It's all been received and it's all secure. Didn't you do it? And they said, didn't you do it? Now they're getting nervous. They're thinking, oh my God, who came into our ward? They said, 
We don't have a nurse like that. She didn't come into this ward. Only the people that have primary registration to be in this ward can be in this ward. And that girl that you described, that nurse that you described, uh, she's not on the list. By description, we would have known. And God said, I made the way where there seemed to be none. Because you're trusting me. So I sent you an angel, Puna. An angel took Isabella's blood that day. She was not known to man, but she was known to God. Because I was choosing to trust God with all my heart, not lean on my own understanding. I acknowledge Him in all my ways, and He was directing the path. It was a long haul, needless to say. And Pastor Sessa was right in there with us. And he gave me these four keys I want to share with you. I just quickly want to share these principles. You can break it down on your own, but I'm just going to give you a, a, just an overview of what Pastor Sessad said for me to do for my baby girl, my grandbaby, Isabella. He said, number one, you need to plead the blood of Jesus over her every day. I'm going to give you these four principles real quick, and I'll go back to them. Number two, he said, you're going to speak the word of God over her every day. He said, number three, you're going to see her through the eyes of faith every day. And he said, and number four is most important, Kuna. You've got to persevere. You can't give up and you can't let go. You've got to keep your press. There's life in the blood of Jesus. There's healing in the blood of Jesus. His word is alive and true. He wants to do the supernatural for you. But he says, see, see, see me. See me in the center of everything. Put me there. Put my word there. Put my lordship there. Apply the blood. Speak the word. See through the eyes of faith. And persevere. Don't give up. Don't let go. Maybe it's salvation for a loved one. Maybe there, there's need for healing, physical. Maybe it's a, a relational issue. These are principles for us mamas and you mighty men of God. How wonderful it is that you joined us on this Mother's Day, you mighty men of God. We appreciate you. I love you, Robbie. Mighty man of God. We apply the blood of Jesus over every situation we face. We speak the word of God. What he says is the truth, final authority. And we see those situations that we're believing God to turn around. We see through the eyes of faith because he loves our kids more than we do. And we don't give up and we don't let go. Thank you, Layala, for these beautiful lays on this Mother's, Mother's Day. I was trusting the Lord and I took these principles and I certainly aggressively applied them over Isabella and over any situation that I've ever faced. Maybe today, later on today, when I have some time to spend with you and you mighty leaders and anyone from the family that comes to join me today, because I know my life is not my own, I live for Jesus. See, when we live for him, Everything that is ours is his because it was already his to begin with. So my marriage is his. My children are his. My grandchildren, our ministry, it's his. But I'll tell you a story about these four principles that I applied in, in a real way and it was so supernatural what happened. But I want to talk about and get back to the story about Isabella because that was life and death. And I don't know what you're facing, but I want you to know that there's life in the blood of Jesus. 
there's healing in the blood of Jesus. They, believers, overcome them, them, those circumstances that are against us, that want to nullify the kingship and lordship of Jesus Christ. They overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. We've got to keep applying the blood of Jesus. Seven sheddings of the blood of Jesus are so powerful to apply over your family and over every area of your life. And we can go over that sometime as well. If you haven't already been given a lot of understanding about the blood, I'm sure you have because of this great church and your great pastors that are great leaders for you. Speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. There's life in the word of God. And I spoke that word and I said, God, you sent your word to heal my Bella. You sent your word by your stripes. She was healed. But, but this, this part, I understood the first two principles and Pastor says I'd share them with me. Apply the blood. I love the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. I understood when he said, speak the word of God over her. But when he got to this third point, see her through the eyes of faith. I thought I understood that, but he stopped and he said, you got to allow the Holy Ghost to show you what you would not naturally see with your own natural eyes, but he'll show you what you need to see concerning Bella. He'll show you, you'll have this confidence by what you see through these eyes of faith based on the blood of Jesus and the work of Calvary and the living word of God that you speak, you'll see her whole and well he said ask the Holy Ghost I love the Holy Spirit I just love the Holy Spirit he said the Holy Spirit will take up together with you and he'll begin to open your eyes to see what you would, would need to see beyond the natural that you're seeing with your natural eyes your natural eye sees and hears the circumstances that are real faith in God is not a, a walk of denial family you don't say oh she's not she's not sick no I don't say she's not sick I say she's the healed of the Lord I say it by his stripes she was and is we are overcoming there's an overcoming work by the blood of Jesus but it was powerful when he took me to that see her through the eyes of faith and he said allow the Holy Spirit to show you and he will and then he said most importantly he said Kuni you've got to persevere there's a scripture from Luke chapter Luke chapter 8 Luke chapter 8 and verse 15 I love this verse in the passion excuse me in the message Bible TMB in the in the message Bible where Jesus is speaking about the, the power in the word of God that is a seed that has to be planted in our heart. Our heart is the ground. The seed is the word. It's got to get planted in the ground, which is our heart. And he's giving this understanding to his disciples that day. And he goes to this verse. He said, but the seed in the good earth, that's when he's talking about the different kinds of hearts, those hearts that get overwhelmed with worry, those are hearts that get, that get anxious, those hearts that only take a hold of the word when everything sounds good and feels good, but then they quickly let it go. And he's describing all these different circumstances. But verse 15 is what I honed in on for my Bella. Persevere, don't give up. Salvation, healing provision, breakthrough, whatever it is. Thank you. But the seed and the good earth, these are the good hearts who seize the word and hold on no matter what, sticking with it until there's a harvest. Well, I'm here to testify that Arabella was told to be in omission, excuse me, in remission. I call it omission, never to return in Jesus' name. Thanks for watching. Stay connected on all of our social media platforms and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Hope you enjoyed today's message. We'll see you soon.